Hello there, you're welcome to my channel, TNT Connect with you. Thank you so much for watching. Yes, you're always watching. Yeah, I believe that everyone right now is viewing. Uh, before I introduce to you my guest, uh, this program has been sponsored by uh, Tash Cosmetics Empire Limited. Your beauty matters first. Yes, right now, let me just introduce you to our guest. We have Professor Fieldmeyer hmm, from Germany. He's really going to tell us more why he's in Uganda. Where did I find him? Now, all of you are just wondering, where did you find him? Okay, he's going to tell us more, and I'm sure we're going to relate in the comment section below. You're free to ask any question. I'll forward you to those people who will be able to answer the questions. Okay, now, right now, I get back to the professor. You're most welcome. Dr. Natasha. Yes. I appreciate very much to be here mm -hmm. and to discuss with you uh, public health issue of importance, mm -hmm. which in Uganda is called the jiggers. The jiggers. Yeah, guys, we're going to talk about jiggers. So, uh, Professor Herman, I'm going to give him the time to talk about jiggers. How did he discover jiggers in Uganda? Why Uganda in particular? And how has he managed, you know, like, which approach he's using to eliminate jiggers in Uganda? Okay, he's also working with I for Troid. He will also tell us about iPhotrod. So now it's his time to tell us more about this. Let's relate. In the comment section below, again, please endeavor to ask. We need to relate with you. Okay, now, Professor Herman. Yes. Tell us about yourself. Introduce yourself to them yeah. and what you're doing. Yes. Uh, first of all, I have to admit I am retired since seven years from the, the Faculty of Medicine, but I'm still doing uh, work on tropical diseases yeah and i'm um, working in uganda since 2013 mm. um, and the disease um, i am the most interested is called jiggis in kenya and in, in uganda and the scientific name is tungayasis mm. and it's interesting because it's caused by a, a parasite which actually is a flea Everybody knows the flea. Yeah. Dogs have fleas and cats have fleas. Mm -hmm. And humans also have fleas, but this, the so-called jigger flea is particular. There are about 1,400 uh, species of fleas. Mm -hmm. But the jigger flea, as you call it, mm. is very particular. It's the only one of this 104,000 different species of fleas yeah. which penetrates um, permanently into the skin. All the other fleas are just temporary parasites. Mm. They get on your feet, they suck blood, and they go away. Yeah. The jigger flea is totally different, and it's the female jigger flea, um, which penetrates into your skin within a couple of minutes, let's say 20 minutes or so, even yeah. if you have a very horny uh, skin at the feet, yeah. the jigger flea doesn't mind. And by the way, it's the smallest jigger flea which exists. It's less than a millimeter, so it's difficult to see. So, why it is so important? Because the jigger flea, once when it has penetrated into the skin, mm. increases its body size by a factor 2,000. That means from less than one millimeter yeah. to the size of a, a, a pea. And you can imagine that it's something like a tumor which is growing inside your skin mm -hmm. and it causes pressure against the surrounding tissue and, 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 and the nerves. Yeah. And that makes an inflammation that mm -hmm. causes an inflammation. Yeah. And inflammation always causes pain. Besides, the jigger flea causes itching. Yeah. So what people uh, learn first is there is something itching there at my first two right foot. Yeah. And they look around, and then they can already see the jigger flea has penetrated. So, um, in the in the perfect world, yeah, the jigger flea would be negligible because it's a by definition it's a self limited disease. Mm. Once the female scent flea has penetrated, has increased its body size by the volume of two thousand. Yeah it will start to produce eggs. 
and the eggs are expelled. To say so, there is a very small opening remaining in the skin, yeah. and the eggs are expelled. They really come out, and they fell on the ground. Mm. And once this is done, yeah. the so-called off-hold cycle of the jigger flea takes place in mm -hmm. the soil, yeah. which is very similar to the, the off-hold cycle of the other fleas. From the eggs, there develops a larvae. From the larvae, develops a uh, pupa. A pupa. Yeah. A pupa. Pupa. And from there, the adult flees, and then that starts again coming into the skin. But the important point is that yeah. after four weeks, the female jigger flea will die inside the skin. Hmm. So as I said, in the in the the most perfect world, you yeah. would have a jigger flea here one, mm -hmm. and after four weeks, it's done. But what? is the characteristic of resource poor communities in Uganda, in Kenya and in other countries of Africa is yeah. that there are so many jigger fleas penetrating per day and per week, yeah. it gets a kind of permanent reinfection. Hmm. And the number of jigger fleas accumulate. Yeah. And by do so everybody can imagine the more tumors to say so you have in your skin, hmm. the more pain you have. Yeah. And the second point is that because it's itching, yeah. um, that causes scratching. Yeah. Always. If you have something which is itching, you start to scratch. Of course. And by scratching at your tooth, you introduce bacteria. Yeah. So we have uh, done studies in Brazil which showed that all the patients with a jigger mm. also have a bacterial superinfection. Yeah. So that explains why in the real world, mm. A jigger or tungiasis is a disease which which immobilizes uh, the patient, yeah. which causes harm to the whole population, yeah. which perpetuates the poverty, and which is also important. Tungiasis be belongs to the so-called family of neglected tropical diseases, yeah. more than 25 uh, diseases defined by the World Health Organization. Yeah. And all those diseases are related in one way or another to mm -hmm. poverty. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows. Mm -hmm. uh, Bilharzia, for example, is a poverty. Scabies is a poverty-related disease. But tungiasis is particular in the way that it perpetuates poverty. Yeah. And I will explain you why. Okay. So, uh, imagine that you have so many jiggers in your feet. Yeah. You have so much pain in your feet. Mm -hmm. You cannot move. Yeah. A father who should go to work in the field, mm -hmm. to plow. Yeah. He can't go to, go to the field. So there will be no crop, it's because he has the jiggers. Yeah. A mother which has grown vegetables in the garden, yeah. and she wants to bring them, or bananas, she wants to bring them um, to the marketplace. Yeah. When she is impaired by the jiggers, mm -hmm. she cannot go to the marketplace. Yeah. Children with jiggers cannot go to school. Mm -hmm. It's so... It's so painful and you know schools are quite far away and yeah. they don't have shoes of so children do not go to school i have been in the northeast in moroto yeah and um, when we uh, looked at uh, different primary schools mm. the director said the coverage that means the number of pupils which are actually in school yeah related to those which are registered which yeah. should go to school yeah. is in the order of 60%. And he, he thinks yeah. that the majority of those not going to school are mm. not going because they would like to go, yeah. but they can't go because they have the jiggers. Okay, uh, Professor, let me make this a little bit clear. So when the professor says he has been in Moroto, yeah, Moroto is a district in Uganda, the Karamajong region. Yeah, but before the professor went to, uh, Professor Harmon went to Moroto, uh, initially they had a program in Bujiri, right? Yes. Bujiri is eastern yes. part of yes. Uganda. As well in Jinja. Sorry. In Jinja. Jinja. They came all the way from German, laid by Professor Harmon here and started the treatment. That's why right now I want to ask him how long has he been in Uganda, yeah. where did he start, and where is he now, and which measures he has taken to eliminate jiggers. So the jiggers is a so-called zoonosis. That means yeah. the jigger flea yeah. or the jiggers as a disease yes. affect human beings uh -huh. like you and me, yeah. as well as a wide variety of animals, yeah. um, dogs mm -hmm. and cats. Yeah. Domestic animals such yeah. as pigs, pigs 
yeah. such as cows, mm -hmm. um, such as sheep and yeah. goat. Yeah. In even monkeys have mm. the jiggers. Mm -hmm. So this parasite doesn't ask, who is my host? Is yeah. it human or is it an animal? It simply penetrates into the skin. Yeah. And this is important from the aspect of control. Mm. If a parasite affects human beings yeah. as well as animals, which live together with mm. human beings, yeah. then you have, you have to, you have to apply um, a strategy which is called one health. That one means health. you have to to control, you have to combat the jiggers, not only in humans. Yeah. You have to do the same for the animals. Mm -hmm. So animal health is as important as human health. Yeah. And therefore it's called the one health approach. One health approach. Okay, so guys, if you have jiggers as humans, just get to know if jiggers also affect animals. So if you have animals at home, please try to check out and see if your animals are okay. Okay. So, Professor, yep. any other thing you want to tell us about jiggers? For the moment, not. Now we could start um, with whatever you would like to ask. Okay, fine. How long have you been working in Uganda? I started, the first time I was here in the year 2013. Mm -hmm. And then over the years, uh, I came almost every second year, sometimes uh, every third year. Yeah. So, uh, all together, I have been working now for almost 10 years mm -hmm. 10 in years. different regions of Uganda. Mm -hmm. Like which regions? Um, we started in Busoga. Yeah. And I think the district is called Bugiri. Yeah. And then uh, we did another work uh, here in Jinja district. Yeah. And since uh, three years, we are working in the northeast mm -hmm. in the district of uh, Napak and Napak. Moroto, which is very, a very remote area. Yeah, commonly known Karamoja. The Karamoja, yeah. yes. It's uh, not far away from the, the frontier to South Sudan yeah. and the frontier to Kenya. Mm -hmm. So very, very far away. Yeah. So what have you done there so far? Because we understand this pl these places, this kind of machining, have really suffered with G guys. I know if you're in Uganda, you can relate this. I need someone watching right now in Uganda, and if you're from such an area that has been affected by jiggers, just let the world know that the professor is really, Professor Hammond is really telling what is happening. And they have done a lot to fight these jiggers. So I'm going to ask him, what, are, what have they done, him and the team, to fight or eliminate jiggers in these areas? Um, it's about three years ago that um, I was addressed by a colleague from the Ministry of Health. Yeah. And he told me we had the idea to start a new project in Busoga. Yes. Uh, we had already done a census of the population, so we were already doing the field work. And then we got this information from the Ministry of Health that yeah. Jigis in the Karamoja region, yeah. in the Karamajon people, yeah. Has called has caused a humanitarian crisis. Yes. Um, and according to what the official from the Minister of Health said, yeah. Um, it was even more a catastrophe, not a crisis. Yeah. So then I said to my team, let's check it. Mm -hmm. We never know when the Ministry of Health says something whether that's right or not. So we checked it. Yeah. And we found out what we by we call a survey. Mm. which is not a study, but uh, it gives you an idea about the dimension of the disease, Yeah, we found out that almost two-thirds of the population was suffering from jigger. Mm. But not only suffering, yeah. there were many children and elder people who had more than 100 jiggers. Yeah. I can tell you, if you have 10, it's already the hell. Yeah. And 100 makes you completely immobile. Mm. So then we yeah. said, we do our project, we realize it in Karamoja, in yeah. the northeast. Yeah. And I developed a plan. Yep. Shall I tell you about please, that? Please. Yes. So um, I have to go one step behind so that uh, everybody can understand. Yeah. Um, I come back to that jigger fleece. Mm -hmm. So the jigger fleece, as I said, penetrates into the skin. Yeah. And it's completely 99%, it's within the skin. Yeah. 
there is only a very small opening, mm -hmm. less than half a millimeter yeah. in the skin, yeah. through which the jigger flea remains in contact with the air, with the environment. Yeah. Because he has to respirate. Mm -hmm. He has uh, he he is sucking blood. Yeah. He has to digest the blood and from excrete. the human skin. No, the blood is from a capillary. A capillary. But okay. he has to what he digests. Yeah. Fecal material, we call it, yeah. has to be excreted. So the, he needs this opening. Yeah. And the eggs which are produced in the ovaries yeah. by the female jigger parasite mm -hmm. want to get out mm -hmm. because they want to fall on the floor yeah. to reproduce the cycle. Mm -hmm. So I invested, I think, about three three years. Yeah. We did we um, uh, uh, did biopsies from the jigger fleas and used a method which is called scanning electron microscopy okay. to really understand how this jigger flea is lives, what are his characteristics. Yeah. And I found out that this, what we call the rear abdominal cone, which mm -hmm. is in contact through this opening yeah. with the outside air, yeah. is something, is the most vulnerable part mm -hmm. because three the central organs yeah. and or begin there yeah. the respiratory tract the intestinal tract yeah. and the genital tract yeah so it came to my mind if we would be able um, to occlude mm -hmm. to occlude is that okay yeah it's, it's okay. okay yeah it's okay it, yeah, to it's occlude okay. Yeah. this opening yeah he would suffocate mm. he gets no more oxygen yeah he cannot digest anymore. His intestine will get blocked. Yeah. He could not, he could produce eggs, but he could not expel the eggs. Yeah. So we tried different types of oils. Mm. We also tried alcohol and something. But the point is that these openings are so small. Yeah. That let's say water with a detergent, mm. with soap, yeah. even alcohol, yeah, cannot enter. Okay. They cannot enter. So. We identified a mixture mm. of so-called dimeticone oils, yeah. which have a very low viscosity, mm. so they can enter into this small opening, yeah. and they seal it. Yeah, they they seal it. You mm -hmm. can see it in the, the in the scanning electron microscopy. Yeah, it closes really the entrance door to the parasite to mm. the jigger flea. Mm. Um, and we did study a, a study in Kenya and another study in Uganda. That's now about ten years ago. Yeah. To show that you need only to apply two or three drops of this oil. Yeah. To kill the jigger flea definitively. Mm. On the affected area where the jigger penetrated. This is what Professor Harmon is trying to say. In short. Oh, just uh, I just want to you know make it clear for those of you who may think that he's kind of uh, becoming so scientific. Yeah, it doesn't matter. One thing is for sure: he's a professor, he's a doctor, <laughs> a researcher. Just name it. Yeah. Now, for you who is just right there and you have a jigger, he's trying to mention that they came up with an oil, Dimitrian oil, which you just have to treat a jigger. You don't have to use your safety pins, you know. Uh, just getting out of, I mean, like pulling out jiggers. Just imagine if you had like um, six or ten jiggers on your arm or in your feet. Just look up there. When you look up there, you see that photograph. I think you see it. Yeah, so uh, he's going to show, we are trying to show you. Now, this is all that the professor is doing. Now, those children, you know, treating the jiggers and everything, that's what he's trying to say. So you cannot use a safety pin pulling out those jiggers. However, they came up with a treatment. Which treatment we are not discussing right now. I'll bring back the professor in our second episode to talk about how the treatment works, how have they been using it, what are the challenges, what are the effects of this, and how does he feel and the entire group that he's trying to help and how do you feel in the comment section below tell us how you feel so right now we are going to say goodbye to you and i'm bringing back the professor to you he's called professor Hammond from german yes so i want i want him to say goodbye to you and then when we come back we'll explain to you the measures taken to eliminate jiggers in uganda you know uh basically in a um, karamoja region uh 
Eastern region, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, of uh Uganda. So, Professor, we are gonna say goodbye to them. Yeah. Do goodbye. you have any word, uh, like any word you wanna, any information or any anything you just wanna speak to the world about these Jesus? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we leave it for the second. We leave it for the, for second. the second part. Okay. Yeah. So the professor says we leave it for the second part and get ready to watch the second part. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, endeavor to do so. Like and share. This program was brought to you by Tash Cosmetics Empire Limited. Your beauty matters first. Bye. Bye.